Well, God bless you, friend. Listen, this is Pastor Gabe here with, yes, another word of encouragement. And today's topic is simply remaining in joy. I believe that it is possible for Christians in particular to stay in joy all the time. And I know that's a controversial statement because so many people say, but wait, pastor, I have feelings. I go through things, things happen to us. Yeah, things can happen to us, but the truth is we ought to be happening to things. We ought to have a joy that is greater than anything we could ever face or ever deal with. And that includes a national pandemic. That includes uh, the loss of a job. That includes anything that we might face. And here's my scripture to back up what I, I'm referring to. Over in Nehemiah 8 and 10, the word of God says it so clear. Uh, the Bible says, then he said to them, go your way. He says, eat the fat. In other words, get something good to eat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those whom nothing is prepared. Be compassionate, for the day is holy unto the Lord. This day is holy unto the Lord. But listen to what God says. He says, do not sorrow. So I just told you that we have control over our emotions. Amen. The Bible tells us, do not sorrow. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. So a big part of not sorrowing is for us to be convinced to get in joy. Now, joy and strength are synonymous. You can't have one without the other. I've heard so many people say, yeah, 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 but joy is not an emotion, you know? Joy is a state of being, nonsense. Joy is a state of being and an emotion. Amen. When you have joy, yes, you have happiness. When you have joy, yes, you have peace, but it's also a state of being. Believers ought to be in joy all the time, and we ought to sorrow not, just like this scripture says. It says, do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And there are myriads of reasons why we ought to be in joy, like this gorgeous day that we're experiencing, uh, uh, the fact that this is the day the Lord has made, and the Bible says we should rejoice or will rejoice and be glad in it. Like so many awesome things going on, like life, health, and strength, uh, the vitality of our children, our husbands, our wives, things being as well as they are, there's just so many reasons to be in joy. So you might ask, Pastor, how then do I stay in joy? And I'm glad you asked. There are three things you gotta do if you're going to stay in joy. Number one, your thoughts. That is what you're thinking about, what you're meditating on. Your thoughts, your words, and your actions. Those three things are going to determine whether or not you stay in joy. The Bible tells us in Philippians 4 and 8 that things that are of a good report we ought to think on these things. Well, you can't think on things of a good report when you're watching bad reports all day long. When you're in the news, that's constantly reminding you of who just got infected, what cities are on the rise, whatever the case may be. And let me give you a little hint. Some of that stuff ain't true anyway. There is a lying spirit that has been released out in the land. I said some of it. Amen. So you can't rely on what everybody is saying right now. But you can't think good godly thoughts in accordance with Philippians 4 and 8 when you're filling your brain up with wicked thoughts. The Bible teaches us that uh, imaginations and thoughts that are not after the things of God, we ought to cast them down. So when a thought comes in your mind that is not after what God would want you to think, you ought to say out loud in the name of Jesus, I take captive that imagination and I refuse to think on that. I will think on things of a good report. So number one, your thoughts. Uh, but then of course, number two, what you are saying, amen. What you're releasing out of your mouth, what you're saying to people, uh, your conversations, amen. Uh, we ought to let our speech be that which is edifying is what Paul told us over in the book of Ephesians. And when we're having a conversation, it ought to be a conversation that reminds people of the goodness of the Lord. You know, the psalmist said, the Lord has done great things whereof we are glad. So what are you saying, pastor? We ought to be having jovial conversations. We ought to be having exciting conversations about all the good things God is doing. After all, we understand as believers that all things work together for our good. But last but not least, what you're doing. Amen. Your actions. 
Amen. So your thoughts, your words, and your actions, even when you don't feel like getting up, if you're going to be in joy, get up every day, get dressed, go for a walk, go to work, do your thing, and do it buoyantly in the name of the Lord. And that will precede the joy of the Lord coming in. Sometimes we got to do some stuff by faith. When we don't feel up to it, we got to do it anyway. And you'll note that as you start doing it, joy will come on you and begin to consume you. I liken it to the metaphor of someone who doesn't feel like working out. At first, you don't feel like getting on that treadmill. But as soon as you start running and those endorphins are released, joy starts permeating how you feel. Amen. That is in the natural. Your physical body starts wanting more, wanting more. And before you know it, you're all done and you feel good about doing it. Well, same thing in the spirit. If you're going to have joy, you're going to have to get up and put some corresponding action with your faith. You believe that God has blessed you, that this is the day the Lord has made, that our theme scripture, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You're going to have to get up and purposely be in joy and know that for the believer, for the person, watch this, looking forward to the rapture, Jesus's return that everything is going to be just fine because we are always in joy because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Listen, I hope this brief devotional blessed you today. I hope it puts a smile on your face. I hope you're reminded that you are indeed the apple of God's eye and God is taking care of his own. And come what may, doesn't matter what regulations get put out in the land, which ones get taken back. It doesn't matter what statistics say. At the end of the day, ain't nobody God but God. And the believer just ought to stay in confident joy knowing that God is going to substantiate and take care of his own. Y'all, look, I better stop right there before I really start preaching because I'm, I'm feeling some joy welling up in me right now as I reflect on the goodness of the Lord and just how much he's substantiating us, his children, in this hour. I can't have any response except that of joy. So look here, as always, remember, you got it. The most important message of the day, Jesus is coming back real soon. So if you're not saved, give your heart to the Lord by all means. And at the end of the day, in accordance with today's lesson, sorrow not, do not sorrow, Nehemiah 8 and 10. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Be blessed of the Lord. Have an awesome day. God bless you. Can't wait to see you soon. Go to our YouTube channel and look for some awesome gospel preaching to help you in a time like now. Take care. Pastor Gabe signing off.